Okay, let's start this all over again. This is a Moen faucet. It has a, as all new faucets do, regardless of brand, has a uh, anti-scald valve in there. And what's inside the anti-scald valve, there's a piston that slides back and forth. And it keeps you from getting scalded when somebody flushes the toilet. Uh, it lined up, it stuck, no cold water pressure. I took this out, and we're going to go through it again because I couldn't find any place on view to that showed how to get the damn thing out. Um, once you get it out, clean it up with lime, clean the lime out of it, put it back together, it should be working fine. The hardest part so far was getting this, this bolt out. And initially I could get it from here to here, and that was it. So I soaked it with PB Blaster. It really didn't seem to help and I let it sit for a couple days went back tried again nothing you have to have the water off to do this that's the pain in the butt so what i wound up doing is getting one of these which i've had forever it's a uh, impact screwdriver i think i got buffalo brand i think i got it at harbor freight probably 30 years ago uh, and what you do is you put put it on whatever screw you got stuck you'd like to get off. And then you put pressure on it with your hand. You keep it nice and tight. And then I'll try to do this without hitting the camera. And I had a dead blow hammer and I had a straight lead hammer. So what I did is I just sit there and bang. I mean, when you do this with the torsion on it, it will knock it loose. Unfortunately, you got a screwdriver so I show you. The bad part was it was slow process. Every time you'd strike it, it would go ink, ink. So you get a little bit each time. Putting it back and forth, trying it, putting it back and forth, and trying it didn't work. You just had to just kind of keep going through it to get through the lime. Like I said, penetrating goal didn't work. So you just have to keep pounding it and make sure every strike is nice and tight. Check it tight, check tight, check tight. And, and it did eventually come out. Unfortunately, the brass and the uh, valve assembly are supposed to be one piece. They did separate. So I tried, for games and girls, putting this back in without it. Who can the water pressure on it? Uh, without it, and yeah, the fossil works fine, but you have no hot water. So you do need the diverter in it. All right, let me take this out. I want to show you how they go together. Okay, this is the anti-scald valve. And when I took it apart, the piston was froze all the way into the oh, piston was froze all the way out, and it's supposed to slide back and forth, and it's supposed to slide back and forth real easy. Okay, which it does now. Uh, a gentleman, I'll put a link to him. He uh, used a 50/50 vinegar water, boiled it. I brought the water boil out to soak it because I got an induction stove and I want to cook the o-rings and the fact that they're probably about five years old i don't take a chance to get them off there so as i understand these is these these one these one is supposed to be one piece and like i said it's separated when i pulled it apart i put this part back in just thinking i don't need this anymore for 70 bucks and the headache because we don't set our water heater that hot but apparently it does so i am going to go ahead and take this down to the garage press this back on and probably just take a center punch and dip it a couple times I looked at this side here see if I can zoom in and it'll stay in focus focus you there it goes no, it doesn't. okay sure. there you go see there's a little dipple right right in there where they dippled it on this side so that's it uh, the only other thing is when the piston came out after it got all nice and pretty and clean, I wasn't sure if there's a difference or symmetrical. Fortunately, when I was pulling this out, I had scarred the inside of that with a coat hanger I used to hook these holes with. And so, because uh, this is really finely machined, and so I knew which end to go in. So let me go see if I can put that in a vise without destroying it, push that together, and lock it in. Well, uh... Back on camera there. Hello. Hello, hello. Uh, I still got to go down and put a punch. I think I might go down and put a punch. But this thing fit really tight. I, uh, as far as I walk down to the garage, though, why am I... 
So everything else kind of seems like it like force on this thing. So I just put it on the uh, top of the staircase there and took my lead hammer and just to give it a little tappy tap tap and uh, two taps and that sucker snapped right on there. It spins. I don't know if it's supposed to spin. I like the idea of hitting with a punch. Of course, that does make it come off easier next time it gums up. Huh. Such a nice sound. All right, let me go scratch my head on this one a little bit. Aha, I was able to do it. The lighting has been real. I just want to give you a look see up where the. Uh, Let's see up where the valve actually fits. There's several ports on that side, several ports on that side, and then there's one in the back. I don't know what that does. However, let's see if I can get a good shot of this. Thank you for your patience. Just want you to see that there's even more row, more and more O-rings in there. So I took a bore brush and cleaned the threads up. And I'm cleaning up as much as that I can without destroying those O-rings. Because the other problem you got in this whole project is if you drop anything, it's down in the wall. So, uh, all right, that's enough of that. And try one more time. Focus. Ding dong. There you go. Okay, so that's that. So I think I'm gonna put a light coat of silicone grease on all those O-rings in there. Clean it out the best I can and put the cartridge back in. All right, uh, love a lot of thing comes together. I uh, couldn't get my finger back in or get the lithium grease on those O rings, so I put some more on this one. Uh, once again, the biggest paranoia I have right now is from dropping stuff down in the wall there. So I don't know if you can do this on camera and safely put that in there. Okay, do this without bumping the camera and not drop anything down at all. Okay. Let's see if I can do this without. There we go. Oh man, just like downtown. I'm just, that doesn't have to be a tight, it's just got the O-ring on there. So I think I'm going to move the camera out of the way, turn the water on, and see if that got her done. Okay, might as well let you find out with me. Uh, I just put this back on, this on, so I got some pull. Okay. Uh, Alright, we got that hot. The important thing is, ooh, got hot. Yeah, no cold pressure. We've got cold pressure. So, that is working real skookum. And that's what for that uh, anti skull valve's for. I've still got the roots of cartridge. I think it's been for probably about even five years or longer. So, uh, once again, harsh part of what you get it out 50 uh, 50 vinegar water. Get a little boil. I put it in hot water and really boil it. And clean it up, put it back together. I did not. I did not put a set on this when it came out. I just went and put it in there loose. It seems like it's working. We'll leave it that way because I figured off five years I'll be back in there again because of line build up. So, put the light there for line build up. So, anyhow. put that back together and we'll put this on YouTube thanks for watching appreciate it I'll do the uh, boiling tank eat the boiling at the end of the episode show how I cleaned it out okay I finally got the uh, darn thing out and uh, someone else had a video he used 50 50 vinegar and water you notice the 
you shake it the piston isn't moving up and down so I'm going to do the 50-50 water 50 water 50% vinegar and see if we can loosen this darn thing up you can see the top popped off of it but I think I'll be able to knock it back on there hardest part is getting that brass bowl out and interestingly enough just getting it wet with vinegar softened vinegar water mixture softened up a lot of work scraped off with my fingernail so we're going to let this simmer for a little while and see if we can get that uh, piston wiggling back around okay after just about three minutes you see the uh, pistons up there there you go see the piston open the top close it to the right open to right close to left and it's spinning around stick it back in there we're going to loosen this bad boy up oh and better yet I was wiggling it and it loosened up enough where it actually came out so we're going to clean this up separate that is a really nice machine service I think I might take these over and off so I don't cook them in the water that way I can get real aggressive I might put this in the lime away now now nah, he said the vinegar worked it does it is coming right off I need to grab a toothbrush cool. alrighty then uh, this thing here it uh, it's slipping all around in there it's slipping on. I can't do that and hold the camera however one thing I did notice when I went to go put the piston back in is that I wasn't sure which end went where because actually the brass end is supposed to be fixed to one end of that fortunately the camera will show it or not. Probably not. Focus you. Anyhow, I wound up using a coat hanger to pull this out and I marred it up so I know which end goes where. So, put that back together. Take a little lit light lithium grease on it. Let's go pull the bash cap off and I'll show you where that fits on. There you go. Another lithium grease. Just put it back in there. It's out this floats around in there like it's supposed to. Yes! There's 80 bucks we saved. Hee <laughs> hee hot. Good as new.